G'day and welcome to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Today we are doing a, another mock draft. This t- this time we're doing an eight cat roto mock. Let's go. Jordan open. Chicago with the lead. Bryant to shot. Not a game. Not a game. We talking about practice. LeBron James with no record for human life. Harry Bean's going to go. G'day and welcome again to the Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Mitch Casey, and you can find me on Twitter at Ball Boys NBA and on Instagram at Ball Boys Fantasy Basketball. Make sure you are following over there on Twitter and on Instagram, especially on Twitter. We'll be posting out once the season gets underway, all our quick and live reactions to any trades, injuries, performances, waiver wire must-haves, all those sort of things. So Twitter is the best place to find uh, me over there. Um, you can also get all the information of any mock drafts that I'm doing in the future over there as well. So if you ever want to join in on one of these mocks that I'm doing, the best place to find that information is on Twitter. So again, uh, follow me there at Ball Boys NBA. Um, on Twitter. Today, we are doing a mock draft uh, hosted by the one and only Josh Lloyd, um, who is going to be, um, he's hosting this draft. We're doing an eight category Roto League. So obviously no turnovers in this league, uh, rotisserie league. So um, different to the head-to-head formats we've been doing in our mock draft so far. So for those of you who are unaware, head-to-head, we, you verse your um, opponents every week and you have a playoffs at the end of the season. Um, and, uh, but with the Roto, you obviously accumulate your stats across the entire season. It's a games cap format. So that's where, you know, each position can only play a maximum of 82 games. So you can't be changing your rosters every, every day. So there's a few different, um, things we've got to take into account when it comes to a games cat Roto format. So, um, just getting started in a second, although I think Josh is mucking around with the draft order. So um, we will see how we go and get it started in just a second. All right. Looks like we are underway today. looks like I'm picking at pick seven and uh, picking right after Josh. Uh, so hopefully I can take some of his picks and steal his uh steal his guys. He's obviously recording this over on his uh, channel, which is probably going to be out a day before mine. Um, So let's see how we go. So eight category league. um, So no turnovers to worry about rotisserie league. So not many punting going on, not much punting going on this, in this category. This will be basically just where we value each player and obviously taking into mind, um, um, taking into mind what kind of build, what kind of balance we can we can create. So I pick number seven. I'm hoping that I can get a, who do I hope I can get? An Embiid, um, Tatum I might look at, James Harden, although I don't know if Josh will let Harden fall to me. Oh, there goes Embiid. The punt strategy is out the window. So Giannis, uh, maybe Giannis will fall to me. I don't know if I'll go a Giannis at that spot. I oh, know there he goes. He's off the board. Luca, it's an eight category thing, so Luca might be a little bit higher. You know, excuse me, there, guys. All right, James Harden's off the board. All right, who are you going here, Josh? Who are you going here? First round in a roto mock. He goes with Jason Tatum. Ah, that's who I wanted to pick. Okay, okay, okay. Luke is there. Trey Young is there. No turnovers. Let's go LaMelo here at this point. I think the lack of turnovers, obviously, no. Um, that's not a category. LaMelo should be durable. He's a good, solid assist steal guy that I can get at this point. So let's go with uh, LaMelo Ball. 
Lamelo Ball on the Ball Boys. Let's do it. At pick number seven, it's higher than I than I do often see him going, but I just like him. Feel a bit safe with him there. I don't know about like Steph could be someone that I I, I selected there. Um, I just feel like Steph's value in a nine category league is a little bit higher than his eight category ranking in, in amongst this group of other guys. Um, and he's still on the board at pick 10. So I definitely would be having him there. Carly Downs is still there as well. So Lamelo Ball, I like I, that run of guys before me, Harden and Tatum was where I was hoping one of those guys came to me, but yeah, we're, we're not seeing that kind of happen in this kind of a draft. In this draft, we've got a few, few fantasy basketball uh, analysts. So we've got myself, Josh Lloyd, um, this team here, Mike Bibby for three is um, Zach, I believe. And then I think, who is the other analyst in the room? Oh, yes. Um, Rick Lean over here picking now at pick 11. So here we go. Pretty stock standard so far. I think, um, I think this is a fine sort of a draft. So far, Trey Young. Yep, I'd imagine Carl Anthony Towns goes off the board soon. Maybe you see LeBron coming off the board soon. Lillard. I do really, I still do really like the end of the first round kind of area just before the draft started. I was supposed to be picking 11. I was pretty keen to pick there, but I pick seven. At least I got someone different this time as opposed to a Kevin Durant who fell to me last time at pick 11. Lillard and Towns at 11 and 12, sorry, 12 and 13. I think that's a really good start. You're starting with two guys who are really good in points, threes. The, The field goal percentage from Towns helps out Damian Lillard. Free throws are really strong. Um, I like that pairing there. Anthony Davis off the board again in a, in a roto category. It's nice to pair him with a Trey Young because Trey Young's huge free throw percentage can help offset Anthony Davis's. So you're still looking pretty strong there. So I really like that. Um, Very different kind of concept to what I uh, preach a lot in the um, team building aspects for a head to head league. You're kind of balancing out instead of, instead of building on your strengths if Kyrie comes to me, I'm I'm selecting Kyrie Irving uh, personally. Kawhi is on my board as well. Again, we'll talk a bit about games cap formats and the changes that that makes. But I think in a roto league, you can take a little bit more of a risk on those um, injury prone guys because, especially someone like a Kawhi Leonard, when you know they're missing games. Um, and when they're missing their games, you can just fill in that roster spot with a with a bench guy. Oh, what do we got going on here? Is that a is that an auto pick? Are we undoing that one? Devin Booker, Mike Bibby. He forgot how to work his computer. Said to the, the the chat. I don't know. I guess I guess we're rolling with that. I, I'm I'm happy with it if it means one of Kyrie or, or Kawhi come to me. I am a okay with that. Who would I rather? Would I rather a Kyrie or a, would I rather a, a Kawhi? I guess we're moving on. Okay. Well, I guess their decision got taken away from me. So I am pretty happy to go with a Kawhi. Assuming we're still going here. I guess we are. Devin Book is a fine pick at that spot. So, yep. Let's go. Let's go with Kawhi Leonard here. So, yeah, like I was saying, with with the Roto League, you're um, – Mike Bibby, yeah, you, you, yeah, not your pick. Um, I'm still, I'm very happy to take Kawhi. I'm still happy to take him there in a, in a head-to-head league as well. I'm just, um, what are we doing? Draft is pause again. Says your auto-picked Booker. Oh, I hope no one steals Kyrie Irving and Kawhi Leonard from me. Ooh, okay, something's going on with fan tracks here. Anyway, what I was saying about with Kawhi and um, a Kyrie Irving um, pick is that when you take those injury risk guys in a roto league, it's it's a little bit more handy because you can just fill those spots in. It doesn't really matter when the guys miss their their games. Whereas in head to head league, if you're missing your games in the head to head playoffs, it is um, you know it's way more detrimental. 
Whereas these guys, every game is the equal weighting. So at the start of the season, end of the season, it means the same. Um, so I think when you're doing a roto uh, comp, it's, it's not as detrimental if guys are missing at certain spots. So someone like a Kawhi, someone like a Kyrie Irving, if you know they're going to be out, you can put in a streaming type player, get that value, and you don't worry about having to hold him um, for, for as long. Your bench is less important in a roto format as well. And, um, and because you, you don't, you're not rostering and changing the lineups every day in like a daily changes head to head league. So for that reason, um, I'm okay with taking some of those injury prone guys or, or guys that are going to be resting on back to backs um, a bit more so than in a head to head league, but in saying that you don't want to pile up on a bunch of them because it is still important to get a lot of different, um, uh, you still want to get a lot of games played out of these guys anyway. So all right, Anthony Edwards goes off the board at pick number 16. He is getting picked really early in a lot of these drafts. Um, I think it's too early for me. I, I think he seems to be like a really hyped guy this season. And I think just a lot would have to change. All right, let's go. Kawhi Leonard again. Um, so a lot would have to change. He would have to, I, I think he could be close to a 25 point per night go, guy, but the assists are not elite. The rebounds are not elite. The steals are, are decent. He hits good amount of threes. The percentages are still, um, yeah, don't know. Don't know what's going on here. He's very hyped. Devin Booker for Josh. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. A pick 19 is a nice safe player. Nice, nice, safe player. So look, what am I looking pretty strong in right now? I'm looking strong in assists and steals. My steals are excellent. Um, my free throw percentage should be really strong. Uh, field goal percentage is pretty decent as well. I might need to look to get some more points and maybe some more rebounds. So that might be something that I can concentrate on in the next couple of rounds. So maybe looking at getting some bigs in the next couple of picks. We'll see how we go. Again, very different strategy. You're looking for a much more balanced approach. You're not trying to punt anything and, and get really strong in any one particular area. You want to be as good across the board as you possibly can. Cade Cunningham going at pick 22. In an eight category league, I'm fine with it. Might be a bit early in nine cat, but in eight cat, I think it's fine. Obviously his turnovers push him down the board a little bit more. And again, Shea going at pick 21. I'm okay with it because if he misses time at the end of the season, if it's in your playoffs, like it kills you. If it's just a roto comp, then, you know, it is it is what it is. Everyone's going to miss time throughout the season. At the end of the season, it's just as important at the start of the season. So I am okay with it. Jeez, we've got another auto draft again. Timer expired. Come on, guys. Sort it out. Sort it out. I think he was in the queue, though. He wasn't the top guy on the board. Let's get this draft going, boys. Sabonis. You guys know I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the biggest Sabonis fan at this point in the draft. His free throws drag him down. Um, yeah, he's, he was like the top 45 pick in um he was at, yeah like 40 i think he was 41st last year in nine category rankings he might be a bit better with eight category rankings um but again just that free throw percentage just drops him down my board i think there's other guys that i would rather take you know i would much rather be taking what the hell is jt thor doing up here what the hell's going on here franchise chris chioza what is going on something weird's going on at Fantrax here Pascal Siakam at 23, a little early for me. I mean, again, I, in my head, I've got these nine category rankings because I've done all my research on, um, on nine cat. But um, yeah, so I don't have the eight category rankings and, and how everyone filled out off the top of my head. So I might be a little bit off with, with how I'm valuing guys in an eight category ranking. I know that's Josh's specialty. He he likes to to take um, 
He likes to take things at eight category no matter what. I'm a little bit more keen to take into account the turnovers. I used I used to be very heavy on the punt turnovers no matter what, but because it's become so popular and a lot of people just do it all the time, I, I do see the value in just weighing in there a little bit. Um, you, it's always a good tiebreaker. If someone's, there goes Chris Paul. If someone's good in turnovers, but still elite everywhere else, then it's better than someone who's elite everywhere else and bad in turnovers. So I, it, to me, it's just a tiebreaker. All right, it's coming back to me. I think Rob Williams is the guy that I really want to get back to me. He would fix my blocks, my field goal percentage, and my rebounds. He would suck down my points, but that's okay. Um, obviously, he's a better eight, a nine cat guy than an eight cat guy, but I still think at this point he's good value. So. What about pick 30? I'll be at picking at pick 31. Um, yeah, okay. Rob Williams, my dude. Let me just double check that there's no one else that I want. Maybe a Jimmy Butler? Oh, now I'm questioning myself. Jimmy Butler? Um, no, I think I do need those blocks. There's only a few guys that are going to give me elite production and that value. And I don't want to tank my free throw percentage. Rob Williams won't do that. So let's go with some Rob. Put him as my center. I know he's better in nine category leagues, but he's still he's still a bloody good player, man. Um, you know, elite field goal percentage, blocks, rebounds. His assists are nice as a center. He's going to get me a steal per game. Um, uh, suck at my bibby. Yeah, no, I'll never forget me some time, Lord. Not uh, not from my not from my build. He's um, you know, any Celtics player is not going to get forgotten by me. There goes Darius Garland. I think that's a great spot for him. I guess especially in an eight category setting, that's fine. John Morant still on the board. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> I pick number pick number thirty three. I think it's okay. You're punting. There's obviously no turnovers. I think it's all right. There might be some better picks out there. Jimmy Butler's still on the board. Why? Every single mock draft I've done, Jimmy Butler is the one that falls. And I'm, I'm not getting it. I'm not, I'm not understanding it. I doubt he gets back to me, but if he's there, I'm 100% taking him. But it's definitely the trend that I've seen every mock draft that I've done. No one, no one wants to pull the trigger on Jimmy Butler. We all must be scared of his, um, there he goes. We all must be scared of his injury history. He falls every year, every mock draft. I'm just going to let the chat knows. Yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. I, I, I nearly took him instead of Robert Williams, but I, I think I just needed that, that big man stats before, before Jimmy, but. He was definitely in consideration. Definitely in consideration. What have we got going on here? Drew Holiday goes. Ru Rudy Gobert goes. Um, who else has gone? Ja Morant. So top of the board, who should I expect to come back around to me? DeMar DeRozan. What was that? Pick 37. That's okay. I think that's about where I should go. Evan Mobley comes in. Oh, he just got ticked. <laughs> just as I got to put him in my on my my queue. Terry Rozier is someone I want to have a look at. Although his turnovers drop him down in an eight category. Oh, sorry, his he's better in a nine category league because he doesn't turn the ball over as much. Bradley Beal, someone I might want to have a look at. Vucevic, if he makes it back to me. Um, Jordan Poole, what, what is going on with the ADP data here in Fantrax? Where should I, should I be sorting this out by rank? What's going on here? The trouble thing is here when I'm recording this screen, um, for you guys at the, on the podcast over at YouTube, I don't have my, my list right in front of me. So I, I'm at risk of forgetting someone here. And, um, so if there's someone really obvious that I'm forgetting that's just mucked up with this ADP data, 
I apologize, but I don't have my list right in front of me of all the guys that I have off the top of my board. Um, so I'm, rely I'm relying very much on this ADP data, which seems like it's completely out of whack. What the hell is JT Thor doing in, in here? What are we doing here, Fantrax? Zion Williamson. Yeah, that's too early for me. Ah, the field goal percentage is good. And again, I like him, but maybe a bit better in, in this format because if you're not, you're not obviously punting field goals, so you might need his field goal percentage improvement there. All right, what are we at? Pick number 42. I think Beal is the pick here. It definitely will help my points, which are going to be hard to come by later. There's turnovers I don't need to worry about. Let's go. Let's go Bradley Beal. Bang, Bradley Beal. So after Rob Williams, my points were in a bit of a hole. So I needed those points to come back up. DeAndre Ayton by Josh. Interesting. He, I suppose he needed a big. He's got a few guards before that point. So that's fine. He's a bit of a boring player, but I guess boring and Roto is not the end of the world. Jalen Brown, that's too early for me on Jalen Brown. He doesn't, he doesn't rank out very well, especially in a Roto format. He just doesn't do anything really excellent. He does points well, but average threes, average rebounds, below average assists, steals and blocks aren't really there. Percentages are eh, whatever. Yeah, just, just a very average player. I think I'd rather a few other guys on the board at this stage. Vucevic, um, Rosia, even someone like an Jared Allen. I might prefer. All right. What are we at now? Pick number 46, Scotty Barnes off the board. I don't mind it. I think that's about the right spot for Scotty Barnes. I think there's a real opportunity for him to step up this season. He's got upside at this point. Um, rumors about him playing more point guard this season. I think they're trying to get Fred Van Vliet off the ball a little bit more. Maybe you'll have Pascal Siakam and Scotty Barnes running a bit more of the point guard duties or the playmaking duties at least. Um, the minutes were already sky high last season. So compared to some of the other guys like Mobley and Cade, less opportunity for the minutes to go up there. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think, I think he's going to be, uh, he's going to be good. He, he definitely has upside. Uh, absolutely. He, he could beat this ranking. He could also be a bit below, but I think at that spot, it's fine to take him there. Vucevic is still on the board. No way he gets back to me shortly. Right. Alan, I'll chuck on my board. Desmond Bain goes. How are my threes looking? My threes should be pretty good, right? Yeah, Ball, Kawhi, Beal. Although Beal's not the best, the best guy. Mini Jokic, is that Shengun? Oh yeah, Shengun. Wow, what what pick did Shengun go? At? 47. Oh man, we're really getting hyped on Alper and Shengun. I know it's eight cat, so turnovers. That definitely helps him, but I still think that's that's really early. We're really getting hyped uh, on Shangun. Yeah, far out. We're getting hyped on that man. I love him, but don't think I love him that much. OG is in calculations. Just gonna make sure I don't miss anyone with this ADP. Data all messed up right now. Is anyone like, is anyone who's supposed to be going higher, like falling down off the top of my head? I, I can't think of someone who's rocketed down. Ah, there goes Vooch. I think that's good value on Vooch at what was that? 50, pick 50 for Nikola Vucevic. That's, that's awesome value. I, I think he comfortably beats that. Surprised he dropped so far. Like you're taking Vucevic after you're taking Shengun. I know it's the same team that got him, but I would easily flip those picks. Um, just much safer, much, much safer. All right. Coming around to me, three picks until mine. I don't think there's anyone else who's dropped dramatically. Oh, Larry Markadon is quite far down the ADP. I want to make sure that I don't forget he's right down there. Although his turnovers boost him in a nine category, eight cat, he's probably not as valuable. There goes Darren Fox. I think that's a good spot to get him. I, I, I'm a big fan of Fox. 8-cat, boosted up. 
He was um he was a top forty guy after the All Star break last year after Halliburton was traded. He was good, and I I know we were expecting that last season to kick off from the start of the season, but I am ready to get hurt again to borrow a phrase from Josh Lloyd. I think he's he's the guy that I'm. I think he and Ben Simmons are the guys that I I, I get sucked into um, more than I probably should. I don't know why. I, I like me my punt free throws. I, what can I say? I like me my punt free throws. The hell is Boban doing here? Kevin Looney. What is going on here? Oh my gosh. Demarcus Cousins. What's happening to this draft board? Oh, Fantrax. Sorted out. Sorted out Fantrax. I love your platform, guys, but something's happened here. No one's drafting these guys that high. All right. Chris Middleton. How injured am I looking? I've got Kawhi. What am I? What am I after? Do I go a Chrissy Middleton? Do I go? Yeah, I think I think he's the best guy on the board. Let's do it. Chris Middleton, come on to the ball boys. All right, I need to get some bigs now. I've got a lot of a lot of scoring, a lot of threes. Assists are pretty strong. Um, percentages are nice. I need some rebounds and blocks and some field goal percentage. I think my free throws are very strong, so I can afford to take on some of the guys that will maybe hurt my um, hurt my free throw percentage. I probably don't want to take on more injury risk at this stage with Kawhi, Rob Will, and Middleton, who's expected to miss the start of the season. So I'm conscious of that as well. Um, So let's start to look at some big guys that might come back on the next round. Again, Roto, John Collins is someone who is a nice guy, safe guy. Um. Hmm. I like me some Jabari. Keegan Murray. What are we doing with Keegan Murray? Are you, are we having a laugh at 57? What are we doing with Keegan Murray going that high? Uh, Zach, I know, I know you're a credible fantasy analyst, mate, but that, holy geez. Yeah. Josh is, um, yeah, Josh is a bit confused there too. <laughs> Jesus, Keegan Murray. Was there any other choice? All right, are we are we taking this seriously? Yeah, don't know if I can get bored um, on that one. Whew. Keegan Murray. Okay, just got to catch my breath after that one. That was. I don't know what to say to that one, Zach. I mean, go get your guys, I guess, but. Who's whose guy is Keegan Murray? Anyway, all right. What are we hoping for? More more value on the draft board for me then. More value on the draft board. Franz Wagner, a little early for me. I guess he's a decent roto player. He's good across the board. I feel like I'm missing someone. I feel like. I think that was a reach for now though. Nah, yeah. He's just nah, I'm not about it. Not about it. I don't I don't love this draft. I, I always seem to be oh fuck, there goes John Collins. Arrgh. I hate this point in the draft for bigs, and I feel like I'm always picking bigs at this point in the draft. I'm glad I took Rob Williams earlier. I think that that definitely definitely helps me out here. I hate this spot for bigs in like the sixties and seventies. I, I, when, when it comes to like the eighties and nineties, when you can get guys like Claxton and Jalen Smith and guys like that, that's where I think the bigs are really good value. Like, am I looking at Christian Wood here? I might be, I might be. There's something about Christian Wood that I just don't love. 
Uh, free throws. Maybe he's not getting to the line as much in Dallas, so his free throws might not hurt me as much. Jamal Murray. I think that's a nice pick there for Jamal. I like that pick, Jamal Murray, right there. Is um is Ben Simmons coming into calculation now? Eight cat. Eight category league. Uh, is Ben Simmons gone? He might fall a bit later. People are off him. I might leave Ben. What am I at? 66. Okay, I think Christian Wood is fine about here. I think Christian Wood is okay. I love him. Is there anyone else? Guys, is there anyone else? No, okay. Let's let's do it. Let's go Christian Wood. I need some big man stats. He'll help my field goal. He'll help my blocks. He'll help. He's, he can hit a three per game. The point should be 15. I'm crossing my fingers with that selection that on Dallas, he's not um, he's not going to be shooting as many free throws. So it's not a, as much of a drag um, on my on my free throws. I've got some good free throw shooters. Lamo, uh, Lamello, Kawhi, Beal, Middleton, all excellent free throw shooters. Rob Williams is hardly getting to the line and he's not a bad free throw shooter anyway. So I can absorb that a little bit there, I think. And I needed those big man stats. I didn't want to pass on another big man and really, really have to reach for a guy later. Josh Giddy at 68. I actually think that that's starting to get close to where I would value him. And especially in a punt, like in, a, in an eight category league, I think that's actually, that's good value. Um, Larry Markinen at that spot, I think that's fine. I, he was obviously in my queue. Um, I needed a bit more of those traditional big man stats, but I think that's a good pick for Josh there. Um, so don't mind that. Paolo Boncaro. Again, eight category league. That's probably around the right spot for him. Um, in in a roto league, I'm not as high on him. I like him on those punt threes or or, or punt steal or block builds in head to heads. But again, his points, rebounds, assists are nice. I think they'll be good. Don't have to worry about his turnovers. So, I think that's fine. Draymond Green. Perfect spot for him. Roto, again, his points scare people off. The lack of points scare people off, but he's good. Michael Porter Jr. Yeah, these are all pretty solid picks here. Um, I think that's fine. I'd probably rather try and get Michael Porter a little bit later just with his injury risk, but I, I think that's fine. Um, I think he, he'll be a Brown's value. Uh, again, he might be a bit boosted in a nine category compared to eight cats, so maybe not as much value in eight category leagues. Um, what is his back going to be? Ooh, Anthony Simons. Might be a little early for Anthony Simons for me. But that's interesting. He's going ahead of Poole. He's going ahead of Tyrese Maxey. I usually see those guys off the board first. And I, I do think that in compared to consensus of what I've seen so far, I've I've had those guys close together than other people, but I still would probably rather Maxey or Poole. Ah, oh, Wendell Carter. He was a guy I was hoping to get back to me. If Ben Simmons comes back to me, I think I might have to go for him. Um, although I'm stacking up guys who are risky. Kawhi, Rob, Beal. Yeah, starting to get a bit. But what will it be come my pick? It'll be like nearly pick 80. 76, 77, 78. Pick 79. Ben Simmons, eight category, uh, free throws. Oh, well, there he goes. Okay, at least that decision is off my hands now. I think that's good value on Ben Simmons. I know, I, I think I'm probably in the minority on my love for Ben Simmons, but I, I think he's just a really good player. He's, I, I actually really like the fit with him in Brooklyn. I think it's perfect for him. There's, there's not a big center crowding the lane like an Embiid. Um, the spacing for him is going to be great with Curry, Durant, Kyrie, Harris, all those other guys creating space for him. And I've got to think about my pick here. It's quickly getting close to me. Nurkic is getting close to me. All those free throws I'm not too psyched about. All these guys at the top of the draft board. Oh, man. Justin Holiday. Oh my God. 
What is going on? What do we got? Pick. Oh, shit. It's me. Jalen Brunson just went. Shit. Okay. Is this the right? Oh, that's Jabari Smith. Jalen Smith. I want in my board as well. Um, Maybe this is where I go, my dude here. Yeah. Let's go, Jabari. I'm big on Jabari Smith, man. I love him. I think he's going to be good. Um, field goal percentage is a worry. Um, so I'm drafting him at pick 79. I think that's still okay for, for eight category rankings. Going to give me some points. Going to give me some threes, boards, steals, blocks. The assists aren't going to be there. The field goal percentage will be poor, but that's all right. That's all right. I need to address some more field goals in the next pick. How's my... Roster looking. I still need a guard. Get some guards later. Field goals. Rebounds, blocks. Yeah, I need some big man stats. Jalen Smith, I want to get back to me. That's who I want. PJ Washington, he's someone I want. I think he's undervalued, underrated. I'd even take old man Al Horford. Hoping some of those guys come back. Isaiah Jackson, I, I prefer in a roto setting because I can hide him on my bench while he's not starting. Much prefer him in a roto setting or a week to, uh, a weekly changes league. Claxton, Zubats. So there's some good there's some good bigs in this range, so that's why I like to get some of those other stats late earlier. I really like this part of the draft for big guys. Al Horford. Yeah, he probably comfortably beats this. I'm a little worried about him getting rested. Um, but in saying that, there's not a lot of depth on the Boston Celtics, especially in the front court. Like, you've got you've got the Time Lord there. You've got Robert Williams. Then you've got, ooh, there goes Brandon Clark. He's definitely not a bad one here for, um, for Roto Leagues. You're going to get a half a season of excellent value for him. So I, I like that. I think that's, that's probably, that's a nice pick. That's a nice pick. Um, who else do I want coming back around? Oh, fuck. There goes Jalen Smith. What was that? Pick 85. I think he comfortably beats that. I think he's just rock solid. Really rock solid. He's a, he's a really good rebounder for, for his, um, uh, per minute wise. Tobias Harris, you guys know I'm I'm well off Tobias Harris. Although I pick 86, it's not horrible. Um, yeah, just I just don't. He was outside top 100 with James Harden there. You add PJ Tucker to the mix. You add DeAnthony Melton to the mix. I just don't see any upside. Like I, yeah, I don't see him. Yeah, I'm not taking him at, inside top 100. <laughs> um, yeah, but fan track's usually pretty good. I think I think there's there's definitely a bug in in the fan track system right now because I don't think this data is accurate. Like no one's drafting JT Thor at 40, let alone his average draft position being at 40. Um, yeah, that's just not that's just not accurate. All right, all right, all right. Who do I go? Do I want... I think PJ Washington is the pick here. He, he probably doesn't provide me with those classic big man, big field goal percentage and rebounds, but he'll give me out of position threes and assists and steals. He's just a good roto guy. So, oh, fuck. Sniped. Ugh. God damn. Okay. Got to regroup here. I think I think it's Claxton time. Fuck, I want a PJ there. Ah. All right, let's go. Let's go the Nicholas. Come on, Clacko. Jump on the boys. 
All right. Blocks are looking pretty strong now. Rebounds are looking pretty solid. I probably need another guard to get me some good assists. So, yep, that's probably what I'm going to be targeting with my next pick. Who can give me some assists? Who can give me some assists? Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward. Jaron Jackson Jr. Yeah. You know what, Josh? It's not a bad pick. With the um with the roto stashing. Um yeah, I've seen this. That we I was on the uh, show with, with Josh Lloyd and, and someone asked about, you know, Ben and, and Claxton playing together. Like who who else are they gonna play at center? Like like what are they gonna do? You know, like Sure, you don't want two non-shooting players, but you've got a bunch of else, bunch of other spacing on the court. Ben Simmons is a guy who's got the ball in his hands. You could run pick and rolls with him and Claxton. I'm fine with it. I think he's he's very like they're not going to give the minutes to Daron Sharp. Like they're not going to. I mean, he might get a little bit of minutes, but nah, he's he's mid to high twenty to me. Yeah, Jalen Smith. Should they have signed him? Could they have? I can't even remember. Was he was he a restricted free agent? I mean, it would have been a good signing, but they didn't. And um, so, yeah. So he's on the he's on the Brooklyn Nets. He's the only really starting center on that team. So I, yeah, eighteen to twenty minutes. He got that last season. Um, he, and and that was with Drummond there. No, I I, I see him at least twenty five minutes minimum probably more like 28 um in my opinion and i think that's enough for him to have top easy top 100 value with the field goals and blocks that he's going to bring maybe i should have taken jaron jackson I, again i'm not i'm probably not in the frame of mind for roto as much as i'm clued in to head to head you know you can hide him on your on your bench and there is an ir spot in this league um so Maybe I should have gone him. Tyler Hero is a good pick there at 98. That's good value, in my opinion. Points, threes, assists are decent. Jordan Poole's falling. I know I've not been a big fan of Jordan Poole, but he is falling. And um, I think it's about time where I take a swing on him there. D'Angelo Russell. Absolutely. I'll, I'll take me some D'Angelo Russell if he comes back to me. How has he fallen this far, really? Very interesting. This is an eight category league. I hope everyone knows, right? Yep. I want one of these three to four. Fuck. Oh, they're all going to go, aren't they? I had three in the queue with three picks left. Watch them all go. Oh, no. Buddy healed. I want I want Russell here. I want D'Angelo Russell. That's who I want. Come on, Josh. Don't fuck me. Oh, Mitch Robb. It's not a bad pick. D'Angelo Russell at 103, eight category. Yes, his field goal sucks, but no turnovers to worry about. He hasn't gone, has he? This isn't like, hold up, let me try and pick him. Surely he hasn't gone. Okay, good. I was making sure that wasn't a fucking Tyler Hero thing that happened to me the other day. But at 103, D'Angelo Russell... That feels like insane value. Yeah, I feel like that's insane value on D'Angelo Russell. Eight categories. Don't want to worry about his turnovers. He's he's got to play well. He's there's not really anyone. Um, not really anyone to take those backup point guards. You've got Jordan McLaughlin there, but the Wolves are going to be pushing, man. They're gonna they're gonna be pushing. They gave up a lot of depth in that Rudiger Bear trade, so he'll still be getting his minutes, in my opinion. Really good. Like, there's assists from Russell late. I'm not going to be able to do much better than that. You know, when you got something like Trey Jones coming off later, Russell's going to give you way more points than threes. Trey Jones, I don't even know if he's locked in at that starting point guard. I'd expect him to start, but the Spurs are going to experiment a lot. Um 
yeah, and, and yeah, it just I don't see him as their future point guard. So they could they could be doing some stuff down the end of the season, but 105, I think it's fine. Especially Roto, he's probably a nice safe guy. He's not going to hurt you anywhere. Gary Trent is still there. Again, the turnovers boost his value. So in an eight category, he's probably less valuable. Gordon Hayward, that's awesome value on Gordon Hayward. He, um, although I think that's kind of where you might be able to get him. I think that's where you might be able to get him in, in a lot of little leagues. People are scared off by the injuries and rightfully so. But yeah, I think that's good value. Let's chuck Markel Fultz in the draft four. There goes Gary Trent. I think that's good value there as well. Where are we at? Have I filled up uh, one more one more spot on my starting roster spot there? Monty Morris is always a favorite of mine. Like him there. Suggs is someone who I like. My guy's just getting picked off my, my thing, though, at the moment. Bones, Hartenstein, Bogdan, Anthony Melton. These are all the guys that I'm keen on at this point in the draft. Um, da, 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 da. Who just went? Jared Vanderbilt. That's about fine for him. What else have we had happen in the last few picks? Julius Randle's an interesting one. No turnovers to worry about. So he probably is around that spot. I think that's probably fine. I just, just don't think he's very good. There's a chance that with Brunson coming in, that he's um, going to drop again. Brogdon's pretty decent at that spot. I wonder what the Gallinari injury affects him. Maybe he does get more minutes. They play a bit smaller. I can definitely see some lineups where you've got Smart, Brogdon, and White all out on the court at the same time. The good thing is that Marcus Smart can guard up. He can guard threes. So that gives the Celtics a lot of flexibility to, to do lineups like that. So I do actually think that the Gallinari injury helps Malcolm Brogdon a little bit. He's still, he's still not going to be Indiana Brogdon, but um, I think his value is, is a little bit higher than it was before the injury. Mo Bamba. I'm off Mo Bamba. He's, he's, I see what the others were saying before about Claxton. I think that's Mo Bamba's minutes, 18 to 20 per night. All right. Ah, Suggs went. I missed that one. Suggs went. He's a guy that I am in on. Don't mind me some Suggs. I think he's going to be decent. Lonzo Ball is definitely coming into calculations here. In a roto format, I think I'm more okay with it. Can I get him later? Hmm. Do I go someone like Alonzo here? I've got one more roster spot. I've already got Middleton there. Fuck. Let's hope he falls to me with one more. Okay, I'm, I'm risking it here. I'm, I want him to come back to me though. I just think that I've got a couple of guys already injured. If I didn't have, if I didn't have Middleton already, I might've gone him, but I'm not sure if Middleton's gonna make it to the start of the season. Kawhi's already a risk. So I think that, yeah, I think it was just enough for me. When I like Fultz, I like Fultz still. Um, that I can risk Lonzo coming back around. What do you think of the team so far, guys? Let us know down in the comments below. Um, do you think that I could have done better at any particular pick? Maybe I, I could have gone Jaron Jackson, but similar kind of argument. You know, I've already got some injured players, so I like the Claxton. Isaiah Jackson was was maybe someone I considered as well at that spot. Jabari Smith, maybe I could have gone a Jalen Smith instead. I was hopeful that he might get back around to me, but I mean, that's okay. I think I've gotten value, pretty good value with most of my picks so far. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. I know Josh does a lot of his, um, he, he tracks a lot of the, the projections. I know they're on his projections, so I'm sure he'll probably come out pretty well, but 
I do, I do do respect his opinion, so I'd like to see how I'd be tracking on his projections over there. Patrick Beverly going, man, I don't know. Patrick Beverly, what was that? Pick 116. What are we expecting for Patrick Beverly? Some people are getting excited about him. I, I don't know if I'm all that keen. LeBron's just going to be doing a lot. I mean, he's going to get you the threes and steals, maybe a trickle of blocks, but I think it's all pretty replaceable kind of stuff. You know, like it's not, it's not high upside. And now that we're getting into the bench, especially in a roto format, you, you might not be using your bench to start the season for a little while. I think you've really got to start to swing upside here now. Um, you know, you finish off your last couple of your starting roster, which I've now done. Um, so I think it's all, it's all upside now. Lou Dort. Okay. Jeez. 121. Jeremy Grant. That's, that's decent at that spot. It's probably a bit of value there. He might've been a victim of the ADP shuffle. Who's going to pick JT Thor first? Jonathan Isaac, play a basketball challenge. Yeah, I think I think that's fine. Here's a fun one. All right, come on, Jackson. Better be fun. Oh, I don't think that's very fun to me. <laughs> Taylor Norton Tucker, back up shooting guard, back up small forward. Okay. Sure. I think there's much more fun on the board, to be honest. Much more fun on the board. Kongu, like, uh, why have I got Gary Payton? I don't remember putting Gary Payton in my, my queue. I got much more fun on my board. Jaden McDaniels. Let's look for some fun. Who's some fun? Again, I'm looking for Ivy. Fuck, there goes a Kongu. God damn. I might prefer Hartenstein over Kongu, though, although they're pretty close. Patrick Williams could be some fun. I just know Josh is going to snipe me here, though. Although he did take Jaron Jackson, so maybe he's not going to take Lonzo. Come on, don't take Lonzo from me. Tyra Eason is fun. Hmm. Come on, Josh, don't do it to me. You've already got Jaron Jackson. You can't take too many injured guys. Come on. Leave him there. Can't take too many injured guys. Oh, Jaden McDaniels for Josh. I didn't think, I think, didn't think Josh was a big on uh, McDaniels, but maybe he's just hedging his bets. All right, let's do it. Lonzo Ball. It's Roto. I can hide him on my bench. I've got IR. When he plays, I throw him out there. When he doesn't play, he sits, he sits on my bench. I'm not using all of my roster spots. So in a roto comp, I'm very happy to just cross my fingers, hope for the best. He's my first bench player, top 50 upside. And if he gives me top 50 value on 35 games again, honestly, that's not, that's not the worst result with this kind of a pick. So I think at 127... I'm pretty happy with getting Lonzo Ball there. Pretty happy indeed. Isaiah Stewart goes. I'm not just. I'm just not the biggest fan of Stewart's game. He he does have upside, so I think at this pick it's fine. But I I prefer a few of these other guys here on my on my board. I think Bones is a is a guy I want to look at. Bogdan Bogdanovich. What's I haven't I still haven't heard much about Bogdan's injury. He's he's a guy I'm really watching closely with in oh fuck there goes Bones. Zoom running, jumping, and strength work on July 24. Well, that was a while ago. So you'd hope if he's doing that, he's back. Oh, there he goes anyway. Yeah, he's he's someone I'm watching really closely in the preseason when it comes to his availability and if he's going to be ready to start the season. Because he was like a top 70 guy. Again, I'm referencing nine category rankings. So again, I, I don't know what that actually is in eight category leagues. But he's someone that 
Yeah, I know DeJounte's there, but you've lost Kevin Herter. You've lost Gallinari. He's still going to be a very prominent piece in their in their team off the bench. So John Wall goes as an auto pick, although he must have been in his queue, um, I guess. Bobby Portis, eh, whatever. I mean, he'll be good once, you know, in the games that Brooke Lopez is gone. The, oh, fuck, there goes Anthony Melton. This, this point in the draft, especially Roto, you're looking for real big upside. There's, there's no point getting a safe guy here for Roto, in my opinion, because you're not using the bench spots. So you just got to be hunting upside. And, and guys that, you know, if there's a guy sitting, injured, oh, shit, fuck. Hartenstein would have been a perfect example of that. Mm. Damn it. I wanted him to come back to me. Andre Drummond? Westbrook? Ugh. Um, shit. I did really want... I did really want Hartenstein. That really messes me up. That really messes me up. Josh Hart, maybe? He wins out that... Oh, Mike Conley's good value there. Yeah, that's good value there for, for Conley. Uh, I don't really know what I'm doing here. This might go down to the wire. Um, Jeez. Who's a guy that has opportunity to... Step it up. Mm, 10 seconds. I might just got to go Josh Hart here. All righty, Joshy Hart. At 138, let's hope you win out that position battle. Cole Anthony. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, don't love these picks that are on the board left. Really drying up. Steven Adams, he's going to tank your free throws, man. He's going to tank him. I mean, again, if you're just plugging him in every once in a while, maybe you get lucky and he's not someone who... He maybe doesn't shoot a lot in that game. You're kind of looking for guys just to plug and play when you're starting roster spots out. So again, yeah, just to, just to circle back to repeat myself... The starters here are the guys that I'm going to be putting on on the, the court. Whenever they're healthy, they're on there. But it's when Kawhi rests a game, when Beal misses a game, or, or, or Middleton's not healthy to start the season. You're plugging these guys in. So, I mean, when I've taken these guys that, that are a bit more injury prone, I probably still am using my bench maybe more than other teams. So I don't want to go completely stupid and crazy. Um. But you still want that upside because they're not going to be out there every night. You want a guy who can come in and every game, every game or so, they can just do something, do something wild, put up some big numbers. Nothing down here though. I'm just I'm still conscious of that ADP. Messing people up. Javel McGee. That's a good pick. Maybe I should have paired him with my Christian Wood pick earlier. Ah, it is what it is. I don't think massive, um, massive loss. Caruso with my Lonzo pick. Handcuffing. I'm not a big handcuffing guy, but sometimes it makes sense, especially in a Roto League. Sometimes it can make sense. Oh, well, there you go. Josh takes that decision off me. Um, how many picks have we got? We've got two more picks left. So I'm going to go with a Patty Williams here. I think he should have good opportunity. Um, he should be the starting power forward. So let's go with a Patty Will. Um, bit of upside there. And he should be available. 
And that's what I kind of mean by upside, but not silly. Like he, he, he'll get good minutes. He'll be out there. He's not going to come out and put up 15 minutes. So for a team like mine, where I've got a few injuries, um, I, I want guys who are going to at least play good minutes. So, and this last pick will just be a complete fly. I want Tyree Eason to be there. He's always my last round flyer if I can get him. Yeah, Andre Drummond, maybe. I feel like I am lacking a little bit in the bigs, although Wood, Williams, Jabari Smith won't really give me the biggest big man stats. I'm a little light on the bigs, but Hart will give me good rebounds. Who just went? Did someone go off? Oh, fuck. Tari Eason. Um, everyone had him queued up. God damn. Looks like he wasn't making it back to me. Um, Jay Sean Tate. What are the centers available? Is there any big guys that I can get? Gafford, Thomas Bryant. See, Gafford might be a nice guy if Chris Dunsporzingis misses some time. That could be the kind of guy that I'm looking at. Really good, really good roto guy. Not going to hurt me anywhere. Thomas Bryant, although I have seen some reports that he's not going to be the starter recently. So, um, yeah, I'm maybe leaning Gafford over him. I don't know. I know some people like his upside. I'm not as keen on his upside. Um, so I think Gafford is the guy if he makes it back to me. Trey Murphy, not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, let's go Gafford. Come on, Gafford. Make it to me. Drummond would be nice, but the free throws. The free throws are pretty bad. So, again, in a roto, I'm looking after that. But, again, he's the kind of type where, you know, obviously Vucevic misses a game. He'll slot in, you know, in a roto if I can get – if I can pick and choose those games to plug him in, then I can get some really good value off him. Um, similar kind of story is what I'm considering with, with Gafford. If, if Christoph Spazingas misses time, and we know that he's not the healthiest guy, so I might be sitting and waiting on him for a little while. But again, hopefully these guys can, can be healthy. So let's go. Let's go, Daniel Gafford. Dan Gafford. Last pick at pick 162. Again, I'm not looking for someone, uh, not looking someone to produce every night. Just spotting those minutes where I can. He is, um, hopefully I can pick and choose the games that Chris Dupspozigas doesn't play. And if I throw Gaffin out there, it gives me four or five blocks on a night with 10 rebounds. Um, that's what I'm hoping for. Um and then who went after me? Uh, Josh picked Norman Powell. I think that's pretty good. I think that's fine. What do you think of the team, guys? I think it. I think it went okay. As for someone who doesn't do a whole lot of roto, roto leagues. Oh, I just realised I got Lamelo Ball and Lonzo Ball. So, right, right in the uh, the Ball Boys um, mantra right there. So, this is how the team worked out, guys. Started off with Lamelo Ball at pick seven. Got Kawhi on the way back around. Happy to have him there in a roto kind of range. He's a first round guy. Um, so happy to have him there. Does suffer a little bit in the eight category system. He's obviously boosted a little bit more by uh, having the turnovers lower. So probably not as much value as I might have thought. Um, who could I have gone? I mean, I think I think I still like him. Maybe a Devin Booker potentially, but I'm pretty happy with it. 
Um, and then to get Rob Williams, I think was a, a nice selection for him on the way back around. Chris Middleton, I feel like fell. Beal was was good to get me the points that I needed. Um, maybe the picks that I'm least confident with are the I don't know, Christian Wood. Maybe it was one that I wasn't super psyched about. Jabari Smith, maybe I could have gone a Jalen Smith to get those percentages just a bit stronger. Um, I feel like I might be a little bit weak in field goal. Hopefully Rob can carry me there. Nick Claxon should help me. Christian Wood should help me. So I'm hoping that the field goal percent is okay. Um, I'm How are my threes looking? Threes are okay. I think I'm pretty strong across the board. I started with some really strong assists in the draft, but maybe didn't address it much later on. Fultz, hopefully he can get me some, and Lonzo when he's out there. Um, yeah, uh, Jabari can get me some. So tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of the draft. Um, let me know what you guys want to see next. I'm going to be doing the questions and answers exclusive Q&A that we've had over on ballboysmba.com. So if you haven't already, check out ballboysmba.com um, and subscribe there. If you ever want your question answered on the podcast where I'm going to go into a lot of depth, feel free to send me your teams, um, what you want to do. When the season starts, we're going to go through some waiver wire options, some trade options and things like that for individual teams. So we'll be going to do that probably once a week during the preseason, it might be a bit more sporadic depending on how many questions I'm getting rolling in, but I'm going to be doing my first one of that one tomorrow. Um, the day after that, I've got B-Dub coming on and we're looking at some ADP data and what stands out for us there. And then um, next week we'll be doing some, uh, we'll be doing a points league mock draft. Um, we'll be doing some more category league mock drafts, talking breakout candidates soon. I'm going to be revising the first round picks for uh, Roto, uh, points leagues and um, head-to-head -head leagues. So revisiting that uh, without Callum here and just getting my thoughts out there. And then um, we've got some more sleepers and busts and stuff coming out when Yahoo adjusts their rankings, lots of mock drafts, all that good stuff still to come. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Um, I would love, my goal is to hit 6,000 subscribers by the start of the season. So if you guys can do that, it would really help me out and um, give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Laters.